Hi, this is Kay with Initiative Tabletop, and today I want to show you a game that's a little less intense than some of the other games that we've talked about recently. I want to show you Infighting. Infighting is a game produced by Wizards of the Coast from 2007, and this is a game where you are just in a you're in a bar, you're hanging out with your fellow adventurers, maybe some people you don't like, and someone says something wrong, so chairs start flying, fists get thrown, and mayhem ensues. So we're going to open this up, I'm going to show you how it works, and I'm going to show you what I think of it. What you see here is a basic setup for three players. In this game, your objective is to be the first player with 20 victory points at the end of your turn and successfully hit an adventurer to end your turn. I've gone ahead and I've laid out adventure cards for every player, plus I've drawn their initial, act their initial adventuring cards. These cards will include bystanders and actions. Anytime you draw a bystander, they will immediately go out next to your adventurer, as you see here. Each adventurer card has a bunch of stats on it. At the top, it'll tell you the name. On the upper left, it'll give you their HP. The middle will tell you their skill. This is the number that they must hit between their d20 roll and the number of attack dice they're using in order to hit on the high end. The knockout bonus on the right hand side, this means that when you knock this character out, you get an additional, uh, additional VP bonus. The next few symbols on the bottom are your basic attacks. Anytime you hit a punch, you're going to throw it to the left. It'll give you a low end and it'll give you high end damage. The next one is the chair, which will break over the head of your person on your right, and this will also give you high and low end damage. The electric, electric bolt, this will be your power. Everyone's power is different and will have different effects if done successfully. And on the bottom is their defenses. If for some reason they are attacked, they always get, unless the card says otherwise, a chance to react and defend themselves. If they roll a dice or a lightning bolt, they get to do those effects on their defense. So, for the sake of argument, we're going to say that I rolled the highest and I'm going to go first. This is the re result of the first roll. There are three punches, two, li two lightning bolts, and a an nail. Anytime an ale or a dice is rolled, it gets set off to the side. Three ale means that you get to heal, if you can, from the person with the highest VP and you take it from their VP stash. If you get three dice, you get to draw a card from the pile. Anytime that one of these actions are taken, you then mix all the dice back into the roll and the next person gets to roll all the dice. But for now, we're going to set this aside. I get to choose whether I want to make a punch attack or if I want to make a power attack. For the sake of argument, I am going to use my power attack. Now, because I have two of them, I can choose to hit the adventurer. If for some reason I had only done one, I would only have the opportunity to hit a bystander if there is one available. But because there is two, I am still going to decide to go after this bystander right here. This bystander is the goblin sneak, and he is evil. So what happens now is I'm going to take the d20, and I'm going to roll, and I hit a 4. I'm going to add 4 plus 2 to 6. That is below my skill level. However, um... Because the target is evil, the low end of this power is 5. This character has an HP of 2, so this is most certainly going to kill it. These two are going to go to my victory point pile, and an evil character gets no defense roll. If, however, this character was not evil, they would then take the red dice and they would roll. An ale, unfortunately, is not the correct die they need to roll for defense. If he did, however, roll a dice, he would say dive under the table and the attack would miss. But unfortunately this guy did not miss it, so he goes to the discard. When you knock out a bystander, perk is, you get to take in a two, two additional VP. 
Currently I am in the lead and I have 4 VP from one hit. After this, these dice would then go to the next player. The next player would roll. I'm going to say that this person is probably going to punch someone with four. So we're going to say he's going to punch this guy over here. His punch can do one or two damage. So he's going to roll. His skill is 13 plus. He rolled a five plus four is nine. It is not on the high end, but he's going to do one damage. What will happen here is one of the HP from this character gets added to the VP stash of this player. Because no more dice or ale were rolled, the next player would then take these five dice and they would roll them. This turn would continue until someone ends up with 20 VP at the end of their turn and successfully hits another adventurer. One of the things that I love the most about this game is its randomosity. In the beginning, when those characters get drawn, they are drawn at random. And whenever your character gets knocked out, it's not game over as long as someone doesn't have 20 VP and knocked you out to win the game. You get to draw another character. What I like about this is you may be starting off with a character that's not very good against your opponents. However, you may want them to die because you might draw something better. Something that will also help you out in this game are those action cards that I was, show I was about to tell you about. Sometimes they will help you re-roll dice. Sometimes they will enable you to have an extra defense roll. I mean, many other things. The, the game is very diverse and it allows you to play each character differently. And I've, I've never played one game where it was the same as another. This game can get crazy. You can play with up to six people. And I mean, who doesn't like throwing, throwing chairs over people's heads? I do. Um, but anyways, if you're wanting a game that's good for in between other games, you can make it a long game, this is something I would really recommend that you have. It's fun, it's quick, and it's a lighthearted game. So if that's something you're interested in, I'd recommend you go out and go pick it up. So thank you for checking out this review, and we'll see you next time.